welcome to code jogging today we are going to look at creating a simple app using compose ui in kotlin what we are going to do today is we are now going to look at the components in kotlin so for us to understand the components in kotlin i think it's good idea for us to create a simple app and what we are going to create is a calculator and the calculator that you are going to create we are going to look at addition subtraction multiplication and then division so these are the four operations that we are going to use to build our calculator and since we are using kotlin with compose ui then i assume that you have knowledge about kotlin so with, with this video i'm not going to um, explain the whole concept behind Kotlin and, and then its components. We will work on a video explaining the components and then the meaning of Kotlin for you. So we assume that before you are, before you watch this video, you should have an idea about Kotlin. So now let's start building our app. When you are going to build an app. You have to first think about how you are going to start. We have um, two options, whether you start from the UI or you start from the back end. Any approach you choose is okay. But anytime I'm building an app, I always look at the back end. So I start from the back end before I'll start the UI. So with this simple calculator, I recommend that we should start from the back end. We just create our function and then we move back to the UI. So with the back end is Kotlin. It's pure Kotlin and then with the back end is pure Kotlin and then the UI, we are going to use Compose UI. Okay, so now let's go outside our create function and then create our function. So the function will be calculator or let's change it to because we are going to deal with four let's change it to um add let's say addition calculator okay which will accept two parameters that's a integer and then b integer with this one is going to retain a result so we are going to have it and we are expecting to see an error so yes this is the error because we've stated here that we are retaining an integer but inside the function there's nothing here that we are retaining so for us to um, solve this issue here then you have to type retain integer that is zero for now so now the error is gone so what we are going to do next is to perform the calculation because this one is in addition then we are going to find the summation of a and then b then we are going to retain the answer so for us to achieve that then we call a plus b because we are having a as a parameter here and then we are having b as a parameter here so whatever the user will enter and we will pass it here we will pass the first one and then the second one then this function will find the summation and then return it to us okay so this is the long approach with this we can also have a shortcut approach instead of having three lines of code here we can make it one line of code so for us to achieve that that's a short that that's a shorthanded way of writing a function so we can copy this one and then delete the line of code and then make it equal this one with this one we've made our code simple so now for us to um, display wherever the user needs to enter then you have to design the ui so we are going to design a simple ui that's the two test fields and then a button so the test field 
will first be the first one will be the first input and the second one will be the second input and the user will click on the function uh, in the button sorry the button before we can perform the calculation so with this one we have to then declare a variable let's say first input is an integer equals zero then the second input that's another integer for zero okay so now we've declared two variables first input and the second input so now we are now going to design the ui so the first input will be we are going to use column so we want it to be vertical okay so column then we call the modifier in case you don't understand anything please you just listen carefully we are going to exp explain each component that we'll be using here in our next videos so file size maximum and then we move on to horizontal okay so let me move to the next line here okay I always want my code to be easy readable so we have horizontal alignment then we choose center we just want our test flow to be centered okay and then the vertical alignment also should be centered okay so with this one whatever we are going to put inside here will be centered okay so now we are going to use test field to receive the user input so test field okay so we are going to use test field where we'll be having the change when the user enter any value how are we going to receive it okay and then we are going to have first input here okay so with the first input now it's saying that it accepts either test field value or string so we have a way of updating a value in kotlin so we are going to use that one so instead of specifying as a static value here we can then call it remember so it will be a live state so remember then we bring mutable mutable states state of okay so let's import remember and now let's import last one then we are good to go so this one will be an integer that's zero okay yes let's import the set extension okay now we are good to go so you do the same thing for the second input okay okay so now we are okay with our input here so let's receive it as a string and then let's receive this one as a string so that we can come down here and then make it as a string okay so this one is still receiving test field input value must be a string yes it's saying that it should be a string okay let me check what's going on okay 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 it wasn't our fault yes it wasn't our fault yes we have to import the experimenter here that's material is still in development mode okay so now we are done with the first one let's work on the second one too so 
let's copy and paste then have the second one too okay so with this one we can now launch our app and then see the output we can now launch our app and then see the outputs here okay let me indent the code so that we can debug it easily okay so okay so now let's run our code and then see what we have so whilst we are building this we can also add the button to it so we call the button component okay and then we perform the on click here okay 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 nothing is showing unless we, we go inside here yes so fine now we have two test flows one is here and then we have another one here okay so now this is what we are going to do so my emulator is running slow so it will take a time for us to enter whatever you want to do okay for now yes now everything is working so let's continue here and then start adding our button so we have to give it a test that you have to call the test component and then we give it a string calculate okay so when the user click on test then you have to perform the calculation and where are we going to display the final result then you have to come to the top here and then declare a test like this and then we give it results okay okay there will be a result here so with the result we can click on run and then see the update but before we can perform the calculation i want us to do some validation whilst we are waiting for the android studio to finish building up okay so we have to check if the user input is not empty okay you have to check if user input is not empty uh, okay so here the recall is not empty okay and then yes and then we have here and it's not empty okay so now once the user click on calculate and then both fields are not empty then we perform we perform the results so the results will be okay results so default we are showing results here so that we can come and then use it here so this is where we are going to show the final result so with this one we can then have result equal then we call our function okay then the first parameter that's the first input okay and then the second parameter will be the second input okay so with this 
then we is saying that we are having um, integer here we are having integer here but we are passing a string here which won't be possible so we have to cast this input into into an integer okay so to int okay so we should be ready to go now so what we can do is we can then customize our results to be like to be um answer equal this okay so now we are done with our simple calculator so let's run it and then go through and see whether we will get the results okay so let's wait for it to run okay so now we have now we have we have to enter the first input place in two and then the second input will be five let me check oh okay 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 yes i have seen the logic error here yes so we are not updating the second input yes here instead of the first input yeah so let's run our code again so that's the reason why the second field wasn't updating so now let's rebuild our code and then see the result okay now we have it here so now let's click inside and then enter to then the next field we should enter four yes so now we are expecting the result to be six yes so now we've created our, our simple calculator the assignments I want to give it to you is go and then practice the UI you designed here and then continue the rest of the operations we listed here. That's the subtraction, multiplication, and then division. And in our last video, you've been looking at the components in Compose UI. Example the test, the test field the button and then a lot of components that we are going to tackle at the end of this video or the series of videos you are going to make you should be able to create your mobile app using compose ui if you have any comments or any questions to ask you can leave it at the comment section or you can send me a mail thank you see you in our next video bye bye